All right, so in this video today, we're going to go over how we installed the clutch, the flywheel, and a new spigot bearing, or some people call this a uh, uh, pilot bearing. Um, so anyway, um, let's get started. First things first, this is the uh, the pilot, the old pilot bearing. Um, and um, so let me show you what the, the new one looks like. It is quite often the case. Um, there's a lot of variation in parts. I ordered this uh, a spigot bearing. Most people call it a pilot bearing. But I ordered this uh, and um, it was in the description. It said 18V um, and 18GB engine. And uh, so I'm like, okay, I got the right one. But no, actually not. This is the one that came out of the, uh, of the car. And you can see that's significantly smaller. I'm obviously not going to put it back in. It's a little bit banged up. No, no better for wear. But um, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to show in uh, not just this part number, <laughs> but I'm also going to list the other part numbers that you may need um, regarding based based on what type of your engine you have. Uh, and I would highly recommend that um, uh, you take out the old one before you buy the new one. Uh, in, in my case, I'm not going to order another one. I'm just going to cut this one down to size. It's just brass. Um, this brass uh, bushing is a little bit, little bit more than just brass, though. I don't know if you can see um, on the inside. It's kind of a rough, kind of a rough texture. Um, so what the, the old, old salty mechanics will tell you is that these bushings are made to be porous and that you're supposed to soak them in oil prior to installing them. Um, with that said, you don't want to uh, put any oil on it when you install it. I know that makes absolutely no sense. Uh, but um, this is going uh, between the uh, transmission shaft and the flywheel. And you don't want any oil to fling onto the flywheel and cause your clutch to slip. But with that said, um, if you do soak this overnight in oil, uh, oil will permeate through these uh, little pores and a little bit of oil will be left in there um, and it will uh, do heat and expansion. It'll make itself available just in little tiny portions as needed by the bearing. Uh, you can see this is the previous bearing. It's got a little bit of wear on it. Probably could have continued to use it, but uh, it's one of those things where, you know, when you got the engine out and you're replacing the clutch, you should go ahead and replace that uh, that pilot bearing. So uh, enough enough ado about nothing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this and I'm going to soak it in oil and then uh, um, I'm going to put it into the freezer. Uh, and by doing that, it'll reduce the outside diameter. It'll make it a lot easier to uh, to press. So moving on. All right, so I got it all chopped up and I've cleaned up the edges nice. Looks brand new. Um, one thing I would advise though, is if you're gonna do like I did and end up adjusting a, a bearing that's too long, um, definitely check to make sure that it's still round when you get done. Um, if it's not round, it won't even go on the shaft. Um, and uh, you know, obviously that when when you're trying to get the engine on if this thing is messed up it's not going to go on you'll have really fight with the engine forever so um when you put this in device make sure that you're uh you know, just really being very careful not to push too hard it is brass it'll smash um so anyway this is just confirmation that it does go on and this is the bearing surface that it will touch it's very smooth it's all good so into the freezer all right so i'm getting ready here to put the uh the pilot bearing in this is the old one um, I just kind of set this in there so that I can preset the um, uh, the bearing puller. Obviously, this now I'm not going to pull it with this puller. I'm going to use it to push. Um, I got a couple of uh, 7 16 by 20 uh, bolts at the hardware store. These are um, three inch bolts so that they give me a little bit of space. Um, I've got a um, uh, a washer and um, kind of a wide. Um, socket so that I can use this to, to push the bearing in. Um, so let's get started with this. Um, first off, 
you're going to want to set it all up so that it's you got to make sure you have plenty of threads on your your two leg bolts you want to make sure that they're the same length because otherwise you're going to start going at a different angle and you can see how if i tighten as i tighten this one it uh, starts to straighten out okay um Let me just check those real quick. Four inches at the top. Yeah, they're golden. All right, so uh, the new bearing, I had it in the freezer. You see I put it in top of a paint can. It's uh, filled with oil. And I'm about to take this out and clean it up. See how it's almost frosty, it's so cold. The reason why um, I had that in the freezer is to make it easier the ambient temperature out here in the garage is about uh, almost 100 degrees. It's 105 here in Texas today. Um, so the temperature of this bearing is uh, easily <laughs> 20, maybe 30 degrees tops. It's, fro it's freezing my fingers to get this oil off. Um, and I had it soaking in the oil so that uh, the pores in this bearing would get filled with oil. Um, we're not going to have any opportunity to add any oil to this, and we don't want it to be dripping. So it has to be pretty pretty clean. And we're just going to rely on the oil that, that permeated through the porous structure of the brass bearing here. Um, and we're going to go forward with that. Okay, I'm happy with that. All right, so this is very cold. It'll be a lot smaller. It should slide right on you real easy to uh, to get it started. Here we go. And there we go. Okay. Whoops. Ah, try that again. Okay. That's in there. Let's take our our spacer. Now the reason why we're using a um, uh, an apparatus here uh, and not just tapping this with a hammer is you don't want the edge of this bearing, which is very soft metal, uh, to become deformed at all. Um, and this will prevent that from happening. Okay, we are set. instead of a ratchet. Okay, you can see it moving in place there. It's, it's moving pretty easy. I'm just uh, holding this spacing unit here with my hands. Sliding right in place. You can see on my finger there, I used a, a small bolt on the end of this fender shaft. Fuck. Well, isn't that how things work out? So a little minor setback here. The uh, center of my puller, I've used it so many times, as uh, the, the threads have become stripped. So I'm gonna drill that out and either retap it or use a nut on the end um, to uh, advance the threads through the end of that shaft. But, uh, um, you know, <laughs> not everything goes right. It's better that your tools break than the, than the, the hardware that you're working on. Uh, so check back as soon as I get this back into operation and we'll get it going again.
Right. So I had a little video malfunction there, but uh, you didn't get to see the final the final push. But I did get it in. Um, the, uh, the little apparatus that I was using here, um, I had to put a different bolt in it because it turned out it was the bolt that was stripped and not the not the threads of the puller. But um, anyway, um, that shoved it right in there, no problems. It went running with, uh, with, without making any kind of dents or deformations around the outside. Uh, it's nice and clean. Um, I think that's gonna that's gonna slide really well. Now, if if you don't put a pilot bearing in right and you get a nick on the edges or something like this, when you get to putting that engine in, um, it is a very tight fit, and you'll have difficulty trying to get it um, to to slide into place right. So. Um, it's one of those things where you got to get it done right the first time um, or you'll suffer later in the project. Um, so, okay, uh, on to the flywheel. All right, so putting the flywheel in. Seems like a pretty straightforward deal. Uh, first of all, you notice how clean and shiny it is there. Um, we had the flywheel resurfaced when we had the engine um, reboard. Um, and... Uh, so I'll insert a video real quick on how the uh, resurfacing of the flywheel worked out. Pulling out the uh, the drift pins from a flywheel before we can surface it. So real quick, Jeff, why don't you show us how, to, how that works? Okay. Yes, yeah, so we're going to surface this whole entire face and these are going to get in the way. I already pulled one, so we're going to put this, this is a dowel pin puller tool. We're going to slide it downwards, it'll secure it, and then we're going to slide up and it'll pull the pin out. Ding. And then just tap it into this little tube, and it'll drop the pin in there. There you go. Have the right tool for the job. Excellent. No clutch slippage for me. Breaks the eggs to make an omelet, right? Okay, so uh, with that handled, you notice on the flywheel here you have uh, um, an array of bolts, bolt holes. These two here go on the studs. The rest of them. Are going to go um, are going to be uh, screws for or holes for screws. Uh, so anytime you're getting something together, make sure the mating surfaces are clean, no burrs, no dirt, nothing uh, scuffed it. I think we're golden here. So let's set this thing in place. It's kind of heavy. All right, so a uh, quick note uh, on the installation of the flywheel, you'll notice that there is a, a mark right here. It says 1-4 on it. And the idea behind that is that you need to have the flywheel oriented so that cylinders 1, cylinders one, or one and 4 are at top dead center. You can see here I've got cylinder number 4 at top dead center. You can see the cylinder right there. And uh, here's cylinder one. You can see the piston right there. And here are the timing marks that show that, in fact, it is at top dead center. So when you're, uh, when you're installing your flywheel, 
make sure that you look for this little tab because uh, it's possible to put it um, 180 degrees out of sync. Now, the reason why is that um, it's a uh, flywheels are balanced about uh, uh, three quarters of an ounce um, off of center so that um, it'll offset the vibration of those two cylinders uh, coming to the top. The um, um, uh, crankcase and the uh, uh, um, harmonic balancer will get rid of the rest of the vibration uh, with the other two cylinders, but uh, in this case, uh, the, the flywheel is balanced uh, to match up for cylinders one and four to be at top dead center. So make sure you don't miss that step um, when, you're, when you're putting it together before you put the clutch on. There you go. All right, I'm gonna kind of hold that. So the bolts that I have set up here, I've cleaned the threads and I'm gonna oil them because they take 65 foot pounds. This uh, little dealy bobber here is, uh, goes underneath the bolts and you'll be able to pull these little tangs up to make sure that they stay get locked in place. These pins are not sliding right on, so I'm going to put a couple of these bolts in place and pull them into pull the flywheel into seat. We'll continue. All right. When you're uh, looking at your flywheel, you might want to consider buying a new one if you, uh, you have problems with the, uh, the teeth. These teeth are actually uh, pressed in, and you can actually replace these, these teeth without having to replace your flywheel. Another thing to inspect with your flywheel, and, and uh, in this case, you can see I had it resurfaced, is uh, if there's any wear from the clutch. And if the, the flywheel itself is kind of uh, like a, uh, a brake uh, a, a break disc, uh, there's a little bit of wear on there. You can have it resurfaced. Uh, and they also, you can get uh, a reduced weight, a, a lightweight flywheel. Um, there's some performance uh, enhancements that, that that helps out with. Okay. All right, those are just kind of seated. But uh, you can see the pins are seated in there nicely. Let's go ahead and oil these up, get them in place. The reason why you oil um, bolts um, when you're going to put torque on them is uh, if there's any kind of uh, debris or any kind of an obstruction, you'll get a false torque reading. Um, and so since these are high torque bolts, these are going to take a uh, 63 foot-pounds, although I think I'm just going to set it to 62. I don't know that I can get 63 on my torque wrench. Um, but um, the uh, the higher torque settings, you want to make sure you get a good accurate torque on these bolts. So having a little bit of oil on them really helps out. I know, earlier in the video I talked about not putting oil on stuff because you don't want it to fling out onto the flywheel. And here I am putting oil on stuff. Um, but this oil is not going to be a problem. A very little bit of oil. And I'll wipe it all up and we'll use some brake clean when, the, uh, when we get this thing ready. Alright, slightly torque these. Okay. 
Um, so getting torque on uh, a spinning object is always difficult. You always have to find a way to jam it. Um, and in the case of your flywheel, normally you can find a place where you can slide a screwdriver in. Uh, I'm not exactly certain I can do that on this one. But we'll find a way to, uh, to get that to stand steady. Let me take a break. All right, last thing before we start getting, getting the clutch going is to bend these tabs. See if I can get the pliers in there, get them to bend. Okay, so moving on to the clutch. Once you start talking about the clutch, you got to talk about being hospital clean. We absolutely don't want any hot spots, any kind of lubricant, anything that can cause contamination between the, the flywheel, the clutch plate, and the pressure plate. Okay, so first thing we're going to do here, we're going to clean off the, the, um, the flywheel with a little brake clean. It's going to get all the oil and any fingerprints or anything on there that is it's going to cause any contamination. And it dries pretty quick. Got a brand new clean rag. Clean all this out really nice. See all that goo? Didn't even think it was there at first, did you? Look at all that goo. Just like cleaning a rifle. You want to clean it until your until your cloth comes away clean. And it's still coming away dirty here. So I'm gonna turn it inside out and try again. Spotless clean. Getting there. Okay, I think we're good. Nice clean surface. Um, next thing you need to do is uh, you need to work this pressure plate. Or this is the uh, actual clutch plate here. You don't ever want to touch the uh, the outer outer surfaces. This is a uh, uh, clutch alignment tool. Uh, basically, you just slide it in here. It goes into the splines. This part here will go into that a pilot bearing that you just put together and it sits there waiting for you to put the pressure plate on but what that does is it helps you to line it up everything stays aligned um, so that when you put the pressure plate on you don't have to worry about it sliding around um, and then before you tighten it all up you want to make sure that it is absolutely centered right those splines are what's going to connect to the, the splines on the transmission shaft <laughs> All right, and so here's the pressure plate. We're going to do the same thing on the pressure plate that we did with the flywheel. Start out with a brand new rag. And uh, try not to get any 
brake cleaner. Any place where it doesn't need to be. This is brand new, so it's going to be a lot easier to clean. We're just basically getting fingerprints off of here. Alright, so now you can see how that works. The, uh, the flywheel is on one side of the clutch plate, and then the pressure plate is on the outside of the pressure plate. And when um, you see these springs down here, when you push on those with the throwout bearing, then the clutch is, is released. It, it, this pressure plate backs, backs off um, and it gives the clutch um, a, a relief so that it can move off. All right, so let's uh, bring out all the, all the bolts. Just to make sure we got everything all lined up. These bolts are going to be torqued to uh, 20 foot pounds. Got all my bolts and all my uh, lock washers all lined up. Okay. So just like on the flywheel, it had some studs. These little studs here uh, help to align it. So when you're getting it together, you don't have to worry about um, you know where everything goes. Likewise, on the pressure plate, those studs line up as well. So, see these bolt holes? The larger bolt holes are where the screws are going to go. And on the other side of one of those bolt holes, you'll see where the stud goes. Just like that. See how this clutch alignment tool works? It uh, once you get it all bolted in place, you can be able to pull it out. I'm just lining it up to make sure it's nice and nice and centered before I start putting bolts in. Now, one of the things you probably can't see is the gap. You see this gap right here? I need to put a screwdriver in there right now. That is the gap that is going to be taken up by the spring of this pressure plate once we get all these bolts in. So, line some of these up. Okay, torquing these to 20 foot-pounds. Doing a cross pattern. Sometimes you have to put torque on something. Let's do it in a cross pattern.
That is a clutch installed. Just a review. Today we installed a new pilot bearing, otherwise known as a spigot bearing. Uh, we installed the, uh, the flywheel, cleaned up the flywheel, installed the clutch and uh, the clutch pressure plate. And now we're ready for the engine to go in. So uh, stay tuned, make sure you subscribe, leave comments if you have suggestions, and uh, we'll check in with you later. Have a good day.